Hi guys, welcome to a new video. As some of you may know, if you already follow the channel, I am a big fan of collecting metrics and data from a wearable device, in my case, a Garmin 945 watch. I find that having an eye on this data and combining it with honest check-ins with our body and how we feel can provide great value and insights in order to live our life to the fullest and getting the most out of training, life quality, sleep, the foods we fuel ourselves with, and general recovery. Today, I would like to share with you the key metrics that I check every morning upon waking, how I interpret these metrics, and how I take action upon them. Taking action directly means that it impacts how I conduct my morning routine and my day, including training intensity and fueling. So let me share with you a case study this morning of the metrics, the data, how I interpreted it, and what I did in my morning routine as a result of these metrics. I try and wake up every morning without an alarm clock at around sunrise. Some days it happens, some days it doesn't, like today. Today I woke up after sunrise. I work one hour and 20 minutes after sunrise. I roll in bed, stretch a little bit, and check in with myself. How did I sleep? How do I feel? Am I feeling refreshed and energized? Do I feel like jumping out of bed right now and getting after it? Or am I still feeling tired? Only after having done this check-in, I then check my stats on my Garmin watch. The watch I currently have is a Garmin 945. I find it to be a great tracker with a lot of insights, both for training and lifestyle purposes. For a video all about the Garmin physiological metrics, check out this video right here that I made some months ago, where it explains in depth all the things that I'm gonna talk about in this video right here. First, I check what time it is and if I've slept more than usual. If I've slept to a later time than usual, this usually is a good indication that I've either gone to bed too late the night before or that I had a pretty hard day training the day before so that my recovery needs had increased. In today's case, it is both. Yesterday, I had a pretty hard day on the bike, both moving from one house to another and then following it with some structured training. And I went to bed fairly late at around 20 past 10. And definitely, I needed a lot of recovery from the day before. The total time on the bike was four hours and 30 minutes with bike packing gear on and then with structured training. So it was a pretty demanding day. So the first metric that I check is heart rate. In particular, resting heart rate from the night. Ideally, I'm looking for a consistent number every day about the minimum heart rate that my heart reaches during the night. What usually happens the night after an intense day of training or of long training is that the minimum HR will be elevated. Resting HR will be elevated as a result of stress and the recovery needs of the body. I then compare the resting heart rate from the night with the seven day rolling average from the past seven days. Here, I'm looking for variations day to day in resting heart rate and comparing that with what I did during the days. So comparing this data from the night's lowest HR to the seven day rolling average, I can see a pattern between how the training has been going and how I'm feeling and especially how the past night went, if I feel recovered and this directly will impact how I lead my morning. Next, I check stress levels. This is Garmin's way of displaying HRV data. Ideally for a really good night of sleep, stress levels will remain low consistently throughout the night. If the day before was strenuous or we had a troubled night of sleep, these stress levels will remain elevated depending on how strenuous the day was and how bad the sleep was. This can reveal itself also as high stress going progressively lower and lower and lower. And that in my experience sometimes can mean what we had for dinner the night before was a bit too heavy to digest. Personally, what happens is stress levels remain elevated because my digestive system remains switched on trying to digest these foods and progressively it goes better throughout the night. Then, just like heart rate, I compare stress levels with the rolling average of the past seven days of stress. Higher stress levels can indicate poor recovery status, whereas low stress levels usually indicate good recovery status or that we are basically training very little, so there is not much stress going on. Then I check Garmin body battery. This is a very cool Garmin metric that indicates how much energy we have at our disposal for the day. 100% would be that we have an abundant amount of energy and we have perfect recovery and we are ready to go. A number in the high 90s also means that we have had ample recovery and that we should be feeling good. Ever since one of the last updates that Garmin made, it has been increasingly more difficult to get a 100 score. So 90s oftentimes can do. A number on the 90 usually means that my night's sleep wasn't that great or that I had a very strenuous day the day before. Or it can mean both and a combination of these two things as they correlate very closely oftentimes. Training strenuously the day before or even training too close to bedtime at a high intensity 
often leads to poor quality of sleep. Usually a number under 90 is a cue to take it easy during the day. Giving my body a little bit more rest when I see this metric is something that I often do. And then the final key metric, and I believe the most important one together with HR and resting HR is sleep. Garmin tracks our sleep, giving us a total amount of time, an overall score for the night of sleep and suggestions based on how we slept. I found this data to be most of the time pretty spot on. Usually correlating it with how I feel reveals that the Garmin data is most of the time correct. Ideally, what I try and do is shoot for eight hours of a good quality sleep per night. I opt to do this by trying to get to bed as early as possible the night before, usually around 9 p.m. I find that going to bed really early and just chilling in bed provides great quality of sleep. I can really feel a difference between sleeping eight hours but going to sleep at midnight. I try and time it so that I wake up with dawn, so in this case, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And I found this to have great benefits on overall feeling good, good recovery, and a high quality of life. One thing to interpret the Garmin metrics is if the total time is sufficient, like let's say eight hours, but the sleep score is low, so maybe it can be 60 or 70. That is usually in my case, an indication of having had a very strenuous day the day before, and that recovery needs were very high, and that maybe that time wasn't enough to get the correct amount of recovery. This can also, as stated before, be impacted by training at two of a high intensity, too close to bedtime. Or also another thing that I found is having eaten things that are too hard to digest too close to bed sometimes can lead to disrupted sleep and poor sleep score. Eating hard to digest foods too close to bedtime in my case leads to my digestive system continuously being switched on and having to work and pump blood to the stomach to digest these foods. And this is what happened in this case. Last night, I ended up finishing training at about 6.30 p.m. and I didn't get to eat my last snack, which was a high protein pea protein and banana snack till about a quarter past 9 p.m. and then going to sleep straight after. And this directly, I believe, led to a disrupted sleep and not such a high sleep score. No wonder I didn't feel super refreshed this morning. These things are very normal. It happens to a lot of people and it's just something to be aware of. Sometimes I get way higher sleep scores, even with less hours. Sometimes six and a half, seven and a half hours, I get really high sleep scores. And that could be because A, my recovery needs were lower, or because I timed my nutrition correctly the day before. Finishing eating early enough so that when I went to bed, my digestion was already past the biggest part of the digestion process and was already finishing up. If my sleep quality and the sleep score were poor, this usually is a cue that I take to avoid caffeine in the morning. Caffeine binds to adenosine receptors, which mask fatigue. So caffeine is not taking away the fatigue and the increased recovery needs that our body has and still requires, but it's just masking it. And I find that it comes back with a vengeance later in the day. The worst thing that I found is to mask fatigue with coffee and then train on it. This every time leads to an even bigger slump later in the day for me. So after having checked all these stats, which in reality takes no more than 30 seconds or 40 seconds, I check in with myself again. So I ask the same questions that I asked myself in the beginning for a second time. How am I feeling? How was my sleep? Am I full of energy or is my body demanding a bit more rest and recovery? Then after the second check-in, I get out of bed and the day can start. To close off this video, I would like to show you how I interpreted the data of this morning and took action upon it. So the task of optimizing my next night of sleep and recovery starts in the morning. One thing that I do inspired by the knowledge shared in the Human Lab podcast is to try and get some natural sunlight first thing in the morning and to drink some water. These are usually the first things that I do as soon as I get out of bed. I get outside, I get in the sun, and I drink some water. Getting natural sunlight and hydrating, I found this is a great way to wake up naturally without the need of any other substances, stimulants, or anything of that sort. Today, I was fortunate enough, even though the sky was cloudy, to be able to take a dip in a pool. This provides a radical change in element, so from air to water. And I find this to be a very powerful way to wake up. In Europe, what I would usually do is to take cold showers. 30 seconds, one minute, two minutes, that's all it takes to provide an instant state change and wake up naturally. After having analyzed the data from the night's recovery, I will then choose if to consume caffeine or not. In today's case, being that I had had a long training day the day before, which fatigued me, and a poor night's recovery, resulting in suboptimal sleep and still feeling a bit tired, I chose not to consume caffeine. 
My body needs rest and caffeine is a powerful performance enhancing agent. By consuming caffeine this morning, I would just be masking fatigue in order to get my body to go harder than it actually might want to. What it really needs is some more rest and recovery. This does not mean lying in bed and sleeping, but just means taking it easy. I try and keep caffeine for the days where I really want to go hard, where I want to go past my limits, where I want to really smash it, both in training, but also in work. Next, I usually try and connect with my body with some movement. Being that the day before I had had a long day on the bike, this morning I did some moments of gratitude followed by some bodyweight exercises, push-ups and planks. Nothing fancy, but I really like the feeling of connecting with my body through movement, even in a super simple way, such as push-ups and planks. Bodyweight exercises that can be done anywhere in the world without any equipment. Another thing that I'll also do is my psoas stretch. This stretch helps keep the psoas and hip flexor region really flexible. And this is a stretch that I will do religiously every day to really try and stay loose in that area. After this, I got on my bike and cruised out to get some breakfast. This morning, I went to the nearby city of Choang, 30 minutes to and back to get a banana shake for breakfast. Well, I got to the fruit shake place and it was still closed and there was no one to be seen. So what I did is I went and did some more exercises in an outdoor gym nearby. Very, very simple stuff like Australian pull-ups, and nothing fancy. Also here just with the goal of connecting with my body, feeling the muscles and just moving. Over the past couple of months, I've really been getting back into body weight strength and I've realized just how much I have neglected this aspect of my life during the past years through focusing on the bike or being injured and not really paying attention to this aspect. And in reality, it is an aspect of my life that I really like and enjoy. I enjoy the feeling of this training. I enjoy connecting with my body. I strive to feel good, and this means taking care of myself under a variety of different aspects, one of which is body weight strength. Basic strength work, some swimming, and a focus on high quality nutrition. For the nutrition aspect, I got my banana shake, and then I added my personal pea protein powder that I bought from home. I'm trying to be mindful of my daily protein quota because I found that if I don't focus on that, I feel less energized and my muscles feel flat. I feel less strong. I choose pea protein because it's simple, convenient, very effective, can be added to a bunch of different things. And I think it's really specific for my goal of increasing protein content from plants. It's also fairly digestible. And in my opinion, it is far superior to, let's say, tofu, which is something I don't really like that much, also because of the high fat content that comes with the protein. Pea protein is simple, straight up protein, and it gets straight to the point. This whole routine from waking up, checking the data, connecting to my body, having breakfast and nutrition, took around two hours. Two hours of self-care, two hours of taking care of myself, being grateful for my body and connecting to it, providing it with sunlight, movement, and good nutrition. I choose to do a routine of this sort because I really like the way it makes me feel. I feel great doing this and knowing that I'm taking care of my body. After breakfast, I will head back home and I will start the work day. So shooting videos or editing videos and ideally having a highly productive day. I hope you like this video, guys. I hope it might inspire you even more to take care of yourself, take care of your bodies, which are absolutely fantastic, unbelievable things and to live life to the fullest, doing our best in every single moment of life. If you haven't already, join the Discord chat, the link is in the description, to connect with like-minded people who are into health, fitness, self-development, training, endurance, and all that good stuff. There's people from all around the world, there's injury support chats, there's a bunch of different things. I highly recommend you to check out the Discord chat. It's an awesome place to share knowledge anonymously and grow together. And that's all I've got for today, so thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon in our next video. For now, peace and have a great day.